Hi guys, Ron here again. Uh, today, as you can see from this little uh, setup, is quite a special day because, for first, my first own pair of Emmy wheels has finally arrived, and secondly, this is also a day where I have a set of brand new Zip 454s at my disposal, uh, so I'm able to compare them directly with each other. Uh, and the third pair of wheels here are also MV4.5s, SESs, carbon clinchers. These are the ones I have been using as my loaner wheels that I got from my MV distributor. And these run on some Italian made carbon TI hubs. So, a couple of you have been asking that. If you were to choose a mid-depth high-end wheel set like one of these, then which one should you actually go for? Now, I have gone for the MV4.5s, but for a kind of a, a strange reason, you might think, I also have a pair of 7.8s ordered, and I know that the 7.8s are better than the Zip 808 NSWs, and I really just want to have two wheel sets that match each other, so I decided to keep the 4.5s instead, the 454s. Now, for a more direct comparison, uh, let's get, uh, get some numbers. I have measured uh, all three of these sets uh, without rim tape completely bare as wheel sets, and I have come up with these. Uh, Results on my little cheat sheet here. So first were the 4.5s with the extra light uh, carbon TI hubs. This came in at 680 plus 800, so that's 1480 grams for the set. Then the lightest, perhaps unsurprisingly, were the MVs with the carbon hubs. So these came in at 1420, good 60 grams in the hubs. And then finally the zips, these come in at 710 plus 880, that makes them the heaviest here at 1590 grams, but mind you that these are uh, deeper and wider than the MVs, so the weight uh, basically goes towards aerodynamics and also the sorted profile adds a bit of weight because the layup here is extremely complex because of these undulating shapes uh, Yeah, so that's the weights dial now the dimensions of the rims so the 454s like the 404s are 58 millimeters deep at their deepest point and then they go down to I'll go down 5 millimeters to 53 whereas MVs as all of their wheels from the SCS range have different uh, rim designs for the front and rear. So the front one uh, is 45 mil deep, the rear one is a 56. The rear one is also narrower than the front, so it comes in at 25 millimeters, whereas the front is a 27. The zips are both 28 uh, millimeter wide so they should provide a better fit with 25 mil tires in my opinion 25 i have here uh, on my rear mv this is bulging out a little bit from the rim so that's that's not completely ideal in terms of aerodynamics so the zips are a touch better in this regard now uh, if you go further into the rim design, uh, the lacings uh, and the spokes and the way these wheels are built are also quite uh, different. So the front wheels are of course all basically just radial. The interesting part comes at the rear wheel where the zip, in my experience when I had my own pair back in May, had basically zero brake rub, which I was extremely pleased with, 
I think this wheel had the least uh, wheel drop from all my wheels that I've owned uh, up until this point. And that's, I think, mainly because of these. Uh, well, basically, it's too cross on both sides. So that's super stiff. The hub flanges are also uh, quite large in diameter. And the zips also use this cognition free hub design. So it has a magnet in the ratchet mechanism to help disengage it. And this way we get some free speed when coasting compared to a standard ratchet. It just doesn't create as much uh, friction. And that is also uh, apparent when you just uh, spin the wheel in the bike stand. I have a full ceramic speed setup on there and the standard free hub, uh, the free hub turns the cranks over through the chain because the friction is so low. But with the NSWs, the friction is so low in the free hub itself that it doesn't. So yeah, it's quite not noticeable when you're riding in the bunch and definitely a good thing to have. Uh, then we come to the extra light hub. Uh, this is a boutique manufacturer of hubs and uh, I have to be honest it wouldn't be my first choice if I was building up my wheels. Uh, I have had uh, quite a serious brake rub issue with this wheel and I think it's down to the radial lacing on the non-drive side Previously, I've had some AX lightness wheels with similar hubs and the same radial design and it had a ton of brake rub as well, so I think it's down to that. Radial lacing on the rear wheel, not a very good idea, even on the non-drive side. It might save some weight, uh, the hub flange is also quite small. And another thing I don't really like uh, here in these hubs is that you really have to adjust your preload manually here while on the other two the hub, preload, hub bearing preload is manually set so let's just check out my uh, newest edition so this is the MV Carbon hub also ceramic speed bearings on there so they spin much more freely you can notice that again when on the bike stand and it also has uh, two cross uh, lacing on there on both sides and also J-band spokes compared to the Zips uh, straight pole spokes. So that should add uh, a bit more stiffness in there. Even if I just try it out with my hand, I think these ones might actually, or they will surely be stiffer than the ones with the extra light hubs. So I'm looking forward to test it out. The front hub also comes with uh, J-band spokes, radially laced as normal with front wheels. Okay, so these were the lacing patterns, the hubs uh, and hub designs. Put in comparison. Uh, then another feature of these wheels that I think uh, should be pointed out is the brake tracks because well, we are talking about some numbers here uh, I must tell you I have owned wheels in this category that were 1100 grams weight just doesn't really matter it doesn't really predict uh, the quality of the wheel how it rides how stiff it is how responsive reactive aerodynamic and so on and so on so I really like to look at the complete package and that's what I'm trying to uh, do such a detailed uh, view. Now the brake track uh, on the zips is usable on basically all, all zip brake tracks use the same uh, zip platinum pads so no uh, bespoke pad on there and it really has this uh, banana shaped indents uh, in here and this works excellently in the dry but in the wet to be honest I didn't really feel uh, a 
huge improvement over the standard brake, uh, zip brake track. On the MV wheels, uh, the brake track is quite a bit different and it uses this uh, serrated profile. Uh, yeah, and it's not really as noticeable unless you look uh, into it really closely. And I would say braking in the dry is on par, They're quite the same. Excellent power and modulation in both of these. I think it's also down to the beefed up clincher beads. But the real difference comes out in the wet, where the MVs are not perfect, but they come on uh, quite a bit sooner and are a bit uh, better modulated in the wet. So the bra uh, braking is basically around for the MVs. Now one thing I forgot to mention uh, previously when I was talking about the spokes, MVs use internal brass nipples, whereas the zips use external aluminum nipples. Whether this affects uh, aerodynamics or not, I can't really uh, say. It basically just comes down to rim design. Uh, Zip say that they have been able to uh, put these in with no penalty because of their rim shape. While for MV, the hidden spokes are a bit better. Uh, also, a turn, another difference, the Zips use a standard drilled uh, spoke hole while the spoke holes on the MVs are molded in. Now MVs say that these are stronger than, than the drilled ones but actually according to some independent tests the drilled ones are performing better in terms of fatigue and One more thing I have noticed about uh, Zips that these new NSW series wheels and the hubs on them have quite tight uh, bearings in there so there's absolutely no play but when they are new at least you can feel that there's quite a bit of resistance and I think that they've, that's because they've used some quite heavy duty uh, seals on there and that's a good thing if you uh, consider reliability but they definitely need to break in a bit before they become some silky smooth like the ceramic speed hubs uh, on the MVs. Then, uh, yeah, these are basically the technical parameters that I've been talking about. Uh, speed wise, uh, I would need a wind tunnel uh, to really prove any difference between these, but I think if you look at the market and some other competitors, these are definitely going to come out on top in terms of you know, efficiency, so you can't really go wrong with any of these. And then I have already talked about braking. Uh, crosswind stability is excellent on both. And I hon honestly, I really don't think you could, you would ever need a shallower wheel set than these because I'm just 60 kilos. And even though I'm quite a, a good bike handler, I didn't feel even in the strongest gusts of winds on the faster descents that any of these uh, would lack uh, the sufficient stability to go in the bunch and I didn't I had a pair of zip 303s uh, on, co on comparison with these and it's just not any more stable than these weight wise also if you look at uh, the MV 3.4s for example uh, those are a bit wider but they are just 50 grams lighter and they are giving, giving up a lot of wheel depth and aero efficiency again so yeah I think uh, this kind of wheel set is the shallowest you are going to need if you are racing properly. Uh, then if we consider pricing availability now this is where uh, there are there might be some uh, differences uh, country to country and 
I have to say zips are very well available here in Europe where I live in Slovakia uh, if you order them even if, if they are not on stock in eight weeks you got them in and they come in quite a bit cheaper than the MVs actually at least the ones with the Karma hubs uh, I have uh, had a huge problem with the availability on the MVs actually I have waited for more than four months to get my hands on these finally so that's a plus point for the zips then if you consider uh, the investment itself into these wheels the zips are brand new tech uh, the MVs have been launched two years ago so if you want to consider them long term then maybe uh, the zips are the wisest choice uh, because they won't be outdated anytime soon whereas I think a um, replacement for the 4.5s might be on the way uh, very soon one more gripe uh, with the MVs and that is with the zips you always get a factory built quality controlled uh, super tight and very true wheel set with in the case of the NSW's rim bags uh, brake pads then skewers and the rim tape also uh, plus uh, maybe for some people what might be useful is a cassette spacer to f fit a 10 speed cassette on there if we're running an old system whereas at least uh, where I live the MVs are only uh, available as rims and hops and then the distributor or the dealer builds them up for you but uh, all the things I got from my MVs I got no skewers basically no wheel bags, no anything, no proper envy box. They came in this zip, used the zip box. Uh, so I wasn't really ha happy about that. Uh, no owner's manual or anything. I just got uh, the wheels themselves laced up, the brake pads, two pairs, one for each wheel, and some valve extenders. That's all you get. Whereas you, uh, you get a much more complete package with the zips. And then Warranty wise, the MVs fare a bit better because they have this nice customer care program where you can register your wheel based on this serial number and then you have a 5 year warranty and a lifetime crash replacement which sounds excellent with uh, wheels as expensive as these while whereas on the zips you get a much more pedestrian I would say 2 year standard warranty and I don't know if any crash replacement is available, but I think it is not. So, uh, to sum it up, which one uh, should you get? Well, I don't think there's any uh, straight answer to that. As I said, I got the MVs because I also want to get 7.8. I have them on the way and I want to have a matching uh, wheel quiver to be honest and I think in this bike the MVs look better so yeah not really a performance aspect on either of these two if I was getting 808s then yeah the 454s will be a better option one more thing that just came into my mind the stickers on the MVs they're quite fragile Whereas if Zips have all, already have these nice printed graphics on there, so no need to worry about scratching or replacing the stickers. Yeah, so probably long term investment, the 454 should be better because 
It's a brand new model. It's not going to be replaced anytime soon. They're super stable, super fast. They've got a more modern free hub design. And they and you get a lot more kit. And if you live uh, somewhere near where I live, then they're much uh, more available as well. Uh, they might not be as bling as the MVs, but apart from the braking department, I think they're on par with the build quality and kit you get. Uh, I think it's, it's better value and a better investment as well. The MVs on the other hand, uh, they are a fair bit lighter, so 150 grams, uh, plus or minus a couple, so better for climbing. I really like the staggered rim design, I think it's, it makes, or it could make much more sense aerodynamically. Uh, I really like the subdued looks, and if braking in the wet is your priority, then the MVs are the wheels for you if you ride a lot in the wet and you are still on a rim brake bike like uh, I am on right now. Uh, okay, so I tried to go as uh, deeply into detail as possible on these two rims and give my own suggestions, but if you still have any other questions then uh, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope you have find, found this uh, comparison useful and enjoyable. Uh, if you are looking forward for some more in, uh, information, maybe perhaps about my bike setup or some other high-end cycling related stuff, then don't forget to tune into my channel and subscribe. It's all for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.